Hi there. Time for another few moments of nature with Mr. Ken. I was just out hiking some of our trails here at the Fred Berry Conservation Education Center, and I found these two leaves, and I thought I would share these with you. Two leaves? Looks like a lot more than two. In fact, there are 19 leaflets on this particular leaf, but believe it or not, this is just one leaf. This is just one leaf. Some trees have simple leaves, some trees have compound leaves. But nevertheless, this is just one leaf each. This is one of the larger leaves in Arkansas. This is a black walnut, whereas this is a pawpaw tree. Let's talk a little bit about these two trees. Black walnut trees grow delicious fruit. I know some people don't like black walnut. Me, I love black walnut ice cream, especially in the summertime when it's nice and hot. But black walnut leaves have a special odor about them. If you find some of these laying around and you want to crush them up, give them a smell, they have a, a distinct odor. And it's kind of a nice odor, I think. Same for the pawpaw. Pawpaw leaves, when you crush one of these up and smell it, you know what it smells like? It smells just like a green bell pepper. Green bell pepper, what an interesting smell. But pawpaw trees are even more interesting because they produce fruit. The black walnut produces fruit too, which is good. But the pawpaw fruit is especially yummy. Pawpaw fruits are green. They look a lot like a peanut, and they're about the size of your fist. Have you ever heard of a pawpaw before? Well, here's a picture of a pawpaw fruit growing just down the way. It's very small right now. Uh, it, it won't get fully ripe for another month or so. I hope I can get to it before the raccoons do because the raccoons love eating pawpaws. So being out on the trail, I like to use all of my senses. I listen, I feel things, I smell things. I look at things, I don't taste a lot of things. I'm not so sure I really feel like going around licking a bunch of rocks, but, you know, <laughs> but that's okay. I listen a lot, and I'm not the only person who's listened out in nature. A lot of people listen and write about it. Have you ever read the book Charlotte's Web or Stuart Little? Very, very popular books for children. Uh, I, I read both of those when I was much younger. The author of Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little, his name is E.B. White. Mr. White wrote a lot more than just those two books, but he also wrote poetry. And I want to share a poem that E.B. White wrote. It comes from this an anthology, American Birds, A Literary Companion, and it's about some of Mr. White's observations on the sounds of birds. So this is called E.B. White, A Listener's Guide to the Birds. And he says he wrote this after some time with Roger Torrey Peterson in his famous guidebook. Wouldst know the lark? Then hark! Each natural bird must be seen and heard. The lark's T.E. in a tinkling untreaty, but not always T.E. Sometimes it's T.T.T. -t -t. So watch yourself. Birds have their love and mating song, their warning cry, their haunting song. Some have a night song, some have a day song, a lilt, a tilt, a come what may song. Birds have their careless bow and teeter song, and of course, their Roger Tory Peter song. The studious oven bird, pale pinkish legs, calls teacher, teacher, teacher. The chestnut-sided warbler begs to see Miss Beecher. I wish to see Miss Beecher, sometimes interpreted as, please, please, please to meet her. The red wing frequents swamps and marshes and gurgles conklari, eliciting from the wood duck the exclamation, gee. But that's the male wood duck, remember. If it's his wife you seek, wait until you hear a distressed whoeek. Nothing is simpler than telling a barn owl from a veery. One says, kitsch, in a voice as, that is eerie. The other says, veer, in a manner that is breezy. I told you that it was easy. On the other hand, distinguishing between the veery and the olive back thrush is another matter, and it couldn't be worse. The thrush's song is similar to the veery's, only it's in reverse. 
So let's suppose you hear a bird say, Fitzbue, the things that can be sure of are two. First, that the bird is an alder flycatcher, Empidonax turali turali. Second, you are standing in Ohio, or as some people call it, Ohio. Because although it may come as a surprise to you, the alder flycatcher in New York or New England does not say Fitzbue. It says, we be -o. Choo, choo, choo is the note of the harrier, copied, of course, from our common carrier. The osprey, thanks to a lucky fluke, avoids choo, choo and cries chook, chook. So there's no difficulty there. The chickadee likes to pronounce his name. It's extremely helpful. It adds to his fame. But in spring, you can get the heebie-jeebies from untangling the chickadees from the Phoebes. The chickadee, when he's all afire, whistles Phoebe to express desire. And he should be arrested and thrown into jail for impersonating another male. There's a way that you can tell which bird is which, but just the same, it's a nasty switch. Our gay deceiver may fancy free bee, but never does fool the female Phoebe. Oh sweet the random sounds of birds, the old squaw practicing his thirds, the distant bittern driving stakes, the lonely loon on haunted lakes, the white throat's pure and tenuous thread. Then go to my heart, they go to my head. How hard it is to find the words which with which to sing the praise of birds. Yet birds, when they get singing praises, don't lack for words. They know some daisies. Fitzbue, conkleree, hip three cheers, onkalik, ow weedle ow, teetle teetle chew, and dozens of other inspired phrases too. Signed, E.B. White. Do you hear him? Do you hear that bird? That's our rain crow, better known as the yellow-billed cuckoo. Ow, ow, ow. So when you're outside, take a little bit of time to use all of your senses. Listen, smell, feel, B. Did you know that over 50% of the people in the world live in cities? Uh, I have no problems with people living in cities. I've lived in some very large cities myself, and I enjoy living in cities. But I really enjoy getting out in the country. That means over 50% of the people in the world do not have access to what we're listening to right here, right now. They don't get the chance. They don't get the time, the opportunity to just step out their door and be quiet. You don't have to do this every day. You don't have to do this every week. But once in a while, once in a while, step outside and just experience and be whether you're being outside quiet, or if you're outside playing, or if you're outside exploring, or if you're outside working, please always try to be outside often. He's right over there. 